My mom used green apples a lot. It's basically an apple crostata with cheddar cheese in the crust. It tastes very homey, but... Mm. It never really feels like a compliment when you're in a room full of chefs and you've made the homey dish. Thank you. Oh, hi, good, how are you? Hi, Brooke. Hi. I made a lamb stuffed squid on a black rice cooked with a little bit of coconut milk. Enjoy. Let's try Brooke's lamb stuffed squid. It was a very interesting, whoa. Mm. Oh, my God, it's got every flavor. Brooke did a great job here. I mean, this is really bald. You know, for a person that could have laid back a little bit, the textures, the flavor, the balance. You know, you know what? I, I think when you have muni, it's the perfect time not to lay back and go for it. Right. We did a Thai beef, and it's served on top of the lobster jasmine rice, and a little Thai slaw to top it off with. So what do you think? Did they do you justice? It's definitely a cut of rum. It is. <laughs> it smells really nice. I think the flavors really build well. Yep. A beautiful amount of acid to it and the liminess of the slaw. It starts nice and then it gets spicy. This is definitely bold. That beef looks yeah. amazing. Wonderful. Thank you. Enjoy. What did you do with ginger? I did a ginger caramel squid. That sounds delicious. inventive, huh? I used a lot of fresh lime, a lot of fresh grated ginger. You know, it's very surprising. The sweetness with the ginger goes well together. Thank you. It is a bed of celery root and fennel puree, a clarified butter poached mussel, a frog's leg in a little beet glaze, papadums, and shallot chutney. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't know we had frog legs on board. Amazing. I mean, you've got to hand it to it before you even taste it. It's it's good. really inventive. Yeah, yeah. Right? it's really inventive, and, and I think the flavors are really good. The frog leg isn't the most earthy thing, and yet adding the beet actually sort of made the dish more earthy. So what are you making? I have just a lightly poached sockeye salmon with a little king crab in a seafood broth, mustard seed caviar, and some grilled dill sourdough, of course. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Brooke's broth is really nice. There's a good amount of acid to it. I think the mustard seeds really work nicely. They work. They're not the most appetizing thing to look at once they kind of melt down. I thought the broth was beautifully seasoned. It was right on the edge, though, but that's how I like to eat, you know? Like, I like it, like, right on the edge. Juicious today. So I have the uh, Anson Mills grits topped with a shrimp scotch egg. The shrimp I ground with a little bit of garlic, a little salad of fennel and lemon, and some espalette pepper. I was worried that the shrimp, seeing as it's been turned into something other than like a shrimp tail, right, was going to lose some of that essence. But it's got a really great flavor. Thank you. Our last course. Hello, chef. All comes down to dessert. So I made a purple daikon panna cotta with a sour pineapple curd garnished with white chocolate, pop rocks, and some fresh radishes that I tossed in a simple syrup. A couple seasons back, May Lin put a dessert together that I thought was the best dessert that we ever had on the show, and, and I would have to say that yours definitely rivals that. It was just fantastic. Oh. Uh. Hi, Brooke. Hi. I did black pepper and poppy seed, and then I have a little smoked salmon salad uh, made with some dill. You certainly delivered on the bagel and lox flavor in that. Well, well done. Thank you. Uh, tell us what you made. I made the cured king salmon served with some lightly pickled kohlrabi and chopped Marcona almonds, and then the tiger milk underneath. What I love about Brooke's dish, the textures. Yeah, I mean, There's so many different textures. I think she did a really nice job here. I think the kohlrabi adds a little bit of spice, very subtle, which I think is really nice. I have some uh, goat ribs. I pressure cooked the ribs in some chamomile, some guajillo, and pasilla chilies. Mm. This is the first time I've had goat rib. They're good, right? Mm -hmm. Why did you use fruit as a garnish with the goat? And I wanted to add more sweetness without actually adding so much sugar. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Hi! How you doing, Brooke? Good, how are you? I'm great, what are you making? So I have a chilled avocado soup. It has a little chili in it, and then it's topped off with a salad of some pickled serranos, onions, watermelon rind. Vinaigrette is just citrus and like a burnt onion avocado oil that goes on top. What's the chili that's in here? It's chili de arbol in the salt. And the only sugar is from the watermelon juice? Watermelon juice, and then a touch of lime liqueur. Enjoy. I will say, Brooke's dish looks beautiful. I really love Brooke's soup. It's so refreshing. I wish she had just cut the coconut in half. Mm -hmm. There's a good balance of sweet and acid, mm -hmm. and the spice is a long lingering spice. I was wondering about the lack of protein, but I think the avocado works beautifully as a creamy element. Mm -hmm. 
cocktail on its own I thought was good, but it wasn't getting enough tequila out of it. The combination of the two together worked really well. Hello. What did you make? I did a roasted pork loin with cooked salsa and a fruit and vegetable salsa with jicama and cucumber. What did you use the habanero in? I used the green habanero in the fruit and vegetable salsa. I feel like the, the fruitiness of the green habanero lends itself to that like sort of floral fruitiness. And there is pineapple also. Right? Yes, there is pineapple. Okay. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you. Uh -huh. Brooke? I have a warm oyster with grilled Swiss chard and bacon. Octopus, orange annatto seafood broth with garlic puree and garlic chips. I did a braised pork belly, petal of, of charred onion, and beans. And then the reduction over the top is a reduction of the bean braising liquid. Thank you both. Brooke. You are top chef. Oh, congratulations.